Hello friends, coming at you late uh, this Mother's Day and part of how I spent this Sunday was going to go see Dr. Strange and Mob or as it's better known as Dr. Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and first let me say off the top that I really enjoyed it um, which was you know going into it I saw at least one hit piece by Vulture saying that the film was sexist and then I also heard that uh, it received a B plus rating, same level as Thor, which is insane to me. Like, I don't, uh, I had like two nitpicks with the film. Uh, one is got a spoiler in it. There's no way around it because I have to mention who I'm referring to. But I'll say that for the end so you can stop the vid. But the other part is a little bit more general. If you've seen the trailers, then you kind of know uh, what's going on at least with Strange and Wanda um, and I just I just think you know one you have to have seen WandaVision I wouldn't go into this film without seeing WandaVision right and uh, if you've seen WandaVision or heard about it then you know that Wanda has a family in it um, she has children uh, she has a life with Vision but um, more importantly, she has those kids with him. Um, and in the multiverse, the, well, I guess this is partly a spoiler. Okay, well, if you don't mind spoilers, keep watching. Uh, it's going to be very hard to, I might slip up and give other spoilers. There's a, a kind of a big spoiler towards the end, but I, If you, it's like slight spoilers. I, I'm sorry. There's no really way to complain about what's what's bothering me or discuss what's been talked about without discussing these particulars. So cut the vid if you don't want to know anything. Okay, for those of you who are still here, um, so in the multiverse, these kids exist elsewhere, and Wanda wants them back. That's, that's the beans and Franks, right? That's a big part of the movie. Not the whole point of the movie, but that's a big part of it. And someone said that, you know, she has all these magnificent, amazing, reality-bending powers, and LOL, she just wants to be a mom. And it's like, <laughs> sorry, but, you know, F you. Um, There's nothing wrong with being a mother. And more importantly, she's a mother who's lost her children. And I can't uh imagine what that would be like um you know to have have those kids have those memories and then just have it all taken away have them disappear as if they never existed um i mean that's a horrifying thought um losing a child so to to reduce her to that or to act as if that's not in part in, an important part of who she is now who she's become is ignorant, frankly, um, and in my opinion, sexism in itself to to have that kind of sentiment. Like, not everybody wants to be a mom, but for those who do, uh, for those who love and care about their children, for the good parents, for the good mothers, you know, that's offensive. It just is. Um, I can't imagine any any decent parent being okay with their kid just poofing one day. You know or, or getting killed or lo losing a child you know whatever it's traumatic it's traumatic um and i could sit in a person on one particular path or a different kind of path and wanda's on her journey or we see the continuance of her journey in this film and it goes where it goes without spoilers um and also keep in mind that wanda has lost both of her parents uh, had to sit in the house with their corpses, I believe, because a, a shell hit their home, right? Uh, seen her brother die in the hail of bullets. Uh, so that happened. Uh, had to kill her boyfriend only for him to be revived and then watch him horrifically murdered, be horrifically murdered by Thanos. Um, and then basically, you know, her going through the trauma of doing it herself, meaning nothing. And and then she gets this kind of utopian kind of world that she creates by accident 
uh, with with kids, only to lose them too by the end of it. That's a lot of trauma for one person. Uh, I don't care what kind of superpowers you have. She's still a human being at the center of it. Um, and that can do, they'll do stuff to you emotionally, mentally, it'll, it'll mess you up. Uh, so that happened. Um, then there's the part where it's dark. So I think it was Kevin Faye, Fe I can't pronounce it, Faye, whatever, Kevin, Kevin, I think called this film Marvel's first horror movie, which I understand completely why he said that. And if you see this movie, you'll understand why too. However, if you're going to go dark, go whole hog, go all the way. Don't dial it back. Bring us the gore. Like just, just, you know, go for broke is what I think. Um, they really brought it to the line, but I think it should have been uh, startling. I mean, not not gratuitous gore. That's not what I'm saying. But if you're going to be horrific, be be creepy, or be more disturbing, um, be more violent. Uh, and you can do that without being radar. That's all possible. I'm trying to think of a, a horror movie that, that meets that criteria. And I've got nothing off the top of my head. I'm not a horror buff. But I know that such films exist. Um, where you can be, you know, in, in terms of like, even just like creepy movements and uh, visuals. It, it, they, I can tell that they were trying to do a Disney version level of horror. And I think they should have thrown it out. I think they should have just done the level of horror that they wanted to, you know, wherever the writing wanted it to go. They should have gone there. And then finally, uh, here's the big, big spoiler in terms of who's in this film. I I'll, I'll tell you who's not in this film. And I was disappointed. I really did want to see a Tom Cruise level Iron Man. And I don't care how some people feel about Tom Cruise. I like him personally, whatever. Um, I think he would have made a great Iron Man. I think he would still make a great uh, Iron Man in the multiverse. Also, John Stamos, who will be doing a voice version of Iron Man for some cartoon. But visually, he would make a great Iron Man as well. Like, that's such a... Like, I hope that happens, too. Like, give me several Iron Men who are not Robert Downey Jr. Just to see what that would look like. I'd just be curious. Just just one film. Uh, it would be like like Spider-Man Homecoming, um, but with people we've never seen before as, Spire, uh, as Iron Man and uh, famous people. So I would be okay with that. Give, you know, let's see, let's see a British Tony Stark even. I don't care. Let's let's go with. Uh, oh boy, I almost said Andrew Lincoln, and then I went to Idris Elba. Just thinking of like my favorite Brits. Um, pretty easy breezy. Um, got some options there, but, but, but I would like to see something like that. But anyway, we get Captain Britannica. That's not, that's not what she's called. Becky Carter, Captain Carter. And we get, um, Captain Marvel, who's actually, uh, forgive me. And I, and I don't know her name. She was the best friend of Cap the Captain Marvel in our universe. Um, the black best friend. And I'm calling her the black best friend because I don't know her name. Um, and I'm going to look her up right now. I think she's actually in, is she in uh, 007 or something? Uh, Shana Lynch. Okay, Maria Rambo. Right. So she's Captain Marvel in this one. Here's my issue with it. So we see Peggy. Peggy's got a full beat face, red lip, curled hair, uh, earrings, and then the uniform. Okay. They wanted to make her look as feminine as possible. And then we have Maria, full Captain Marvel suit. Okay, fine. And then she's got like the short cropped hair, curly. It's cute. Actually, I like it. I like it. Uh, and it's very, um, practical. However, no makeup, no arch brow, no nothing. Just very, like, I didn't even recognize her at first, almost. Um, it just felt like 
they wanted to make her it felt unnecessarily masculine um like when you when you and, and it's not it's not and it's not because she had natural hair i want to make that clear it's just that they they went i felt like they went out of their way to make her face look very flat um no highlights no contouring no no lip no nothing nothing uh so when you think about like say the casting of wakanda like even um Koye. I mean, she's bald. She's gorgeous. I and mean, she's got, she's like her face is done. Very feminine. Um, the Kia, uh, Bantu twists, very feminine. Um, and then I, I mean, I wish I had a side by side right now. It felt very like even Captain, Captain Marvel wears makeup in our universe uh to the point of complaint at one point like i remember people were upset because she had like red lipstick or something in that one scene for endgame like who cares she's gonna have lipstick big fucking deal um it just it just it was such a stark contrast and it just it's stuff like that is always going to be suspicious to me because massage noir is so insidious and so prevalent um how people navigate like you know the, the microaggressions and the subliminal whatever and i just want to know what the reasoning was behind it to you know she didn't have the right lighting it was very dark she didn't have any makeup um and i just would like to know what the reasoning behind that was for portraying her in that way uh which is not the way that they portrayed brie larson which is not the way that they portrayed um what's her face peggy carter uh, by contrast so personally i didn't like it and i'm always going to call stuff like that out um not just as a black woman as a, as a black woman creative as a writer um you know i i'm yeah i'm just just expect that from me always that's that's what i'm gonna be about so anyways i hope you enjoyed my somewhat review uh, i definitely recommend you see it i enjoyed the film um and i wouldn't compare it to other x film it felt very different in tone than other marvel films and we began that with the last the last couple of films homecoming felt very different and I'm like, well, it felt yeah. they did some different stuff, but this film feels very different. Um, not Eternals level different, but it felt very different. But uh, I really enjoyed it. So thanks. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, tell your friends. So have a good one.